Welcome back to the Beyond Nemesis podcast, everybody. This is week, like, I've lost track of the numbers. I feel like this is, what is it? I think it's our 16th episode. Um, at least I think that's what my... I, 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 I have, I don't know. I, I have this weird, like, I just got to count. I don't know why. It means nothing, but hey. It's like four months of podcasts. I mean, that's cool, isn't it? Like, it's a good measurement. Yeah, I mean, like, I can't forget that we've been doing this for so long at this point, yeah. to be honest. Four months. Like we just started like two weeks ago. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Four months of talking about Halo. Yeah, and, like, technically it would be sixteen. And me trolling Jedi about like Pokemon and and weeb stuff and complaining and... about Nintendo, <laughs> and Sony, and talking about Halo. Congratulations, guys! Welcome to the sixteenth episode where we talk about Halo again. <laughs> we promise. We we specifically moved it down on the agenda, though, so so we could lead off I with wish other you. topics. Uh, so uh, I'm one of your hosts, Mayor Reynolds. I'm Jedi. I'm your other host. And next week we will be live from Bucky's gas station in uh, Tejas. I actually thought about that today. How sick would it be to like one day do an episode live from Bucky's? Everybody would probably like hate me, dude. Like I would just be walking around the they camera, and all the, all the all the people who live in like the rural area that's around Bucky's is gonna go looking at me like, what the hell is he doing? That's random what as is, hell. Go away, who, loser. Who are these freaks go walking do a around? Work. Bucky's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, have you seen that? Have you seen that? Like, I think it was like a Vine where some girl was like actually just walking around doing like a like a live stream, and some guy comes up to her and goes, "You've got no personality," and like walks away. <laughs> no, but I've seen several like live IRL live streamers have been like mugged, like like se- it's happened like several times now, like like knocked unconscious like by ice people. Poseidon. Like what? Did that or, happen like, to him? Poseidon did. Was that was he mugged? One of them? But like. No, no. So <laughs> he didn't get mugged, but he did get threatened by some like gang members in Chicago, I think. And then, like more recently, I don't know who the streamer was, but he was just chilling, laying in the grass, I think, waiting for like an event to start in Florida. And this guy is just like, "You deal stuff." He goes, "No, I'm just a streamer." He goes, "Oh yeah." He pulls out his gun. He's like, "You a cop? Are you a cop?" And he's like, "I'm not a cop, bro." He like, <laughs> runs away. Pull your gun on a cop. <laughs> Why would you pull your gun? Like, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm a cop. Like, oh, now do I, I, know, I do? Dude. Like, I just... <laughs> no, there's like two Florida streamers. Man strikes again. I think. I think both cases that I saw were American people in, in Europe, like live streaming and like people um, like one time I don't, this guy, he really pissed a bunch of people off in a cafe and the people act like they were leaving it. But then like they come back in like two minutes from a different angle and they just start like relentlessly beating the crap out of this guy in the middle of a cafe. <laughs> both times, nobody was like seriously injured. So, I mean, that's good. Yeah, Witchy, we know how much you're just dying to hear us talk about Halo for the 16th <laughs> time in a week. They should fire... Uh, or, uh, the, the... They should fire Sydney Goodman, who they've got doing that, like, Halo post show, and just hire us. I mean, we could go for an hour. It's I just easy. Remembered that, I remember that they actually had that. I've never watched a single episode of it. Neither have I. I used to watch, uh, like, the follow-ups for, like, The Walking Dead. I did back in uh, the day. That was, like, cool. Yeah, those were fun, actually. That was just really funny. I, I actually liked them. What was his yeah. name? Chris something? Hartwick, I think. Chris, Chris Hartwick. Hartwick. Yeah, you're, yeah. Right. you're right. Chris Hartwick. Wait, he used that to be... Kinda cool. I, like him. I think he was on G4 or something. I, I, I'm pretty sure he had like a gaming like origin, like relatively. I think so too. Let me, look, let me double check here. Chris Hartwick. He was talking dead. Hour long after show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, talking with Chris Hardwick. Oh, the Nerdist. That's what it was. Okay. okay. The Nerdist. Yeah, I had the Nerdist podcast. How can I forget? I, I listened to a few episodes actually, and those were pretty good. All right. So why don't we? I'm actually gonna change the order. Open up with Halo. Yes, let's go. No, I'm actually gonna Just change kidding. the order of this again. This was breaking news today. So why don't we start with this? So Embracer Group. This came out of like left field. Embracer Group, which we'll get into who Embracer Group are in a minute. Uh, they they su- made a surprise acquisition today. They bought Crystal Dynamics uh, and like uh, all of IDOS, what was remaining of IDOS. 
And one of Square Enix... Square Enixes, is that correct? Square Enix, Enix with a Square with Enix. A, Enix with an apostrophe. Enix. No S on, after the yeah. apostrophe. Uh, studios Enix. in Canada. Uh, my friends call them Square Anus, so I'm I'm lucky to even know the the end. That sounds like an appropriate name. Yeah. Um, I never would have thought of that one. So they bought they bought all of that. From from Square Enix, Embracer did for three hundred million dollars, which is like, to me, it's like a song and a dance because they got, I think it was like eleven hundred employees, so three studios, eleven hundred employees, and then along with it, they get Tomb Raider, Thief, Deus Ex, uh, like and a whole bunch of other IPs as well. So like, what do you think it's about this? Here that like, I, well, I mean, like I think you're right. Song and dance is pretty cool, but it's kind of like sad to hear that's how low the Tomb Raider series costs considering of how like of a big uh, impact it's made on, like, like, on history for gaming dude like think... history and gaming and cultural relevancies and stuff like that like it was like one of the first few movies or like, video games to get like a movie mm -hmm. with Angelina Jolie and her side yeah. boob um, Angelina Jolie the only two stars of that entire movie <laughs> um, but I, I think it's pretty cool I mean kind of a I, I was a really big fan of the first Tomb Raider I liked it, and then like the sec Shadow of the Tomb Raider came out. Not the second one, I forgot the second one was. It was all right, and then the third one came out, and I just literally did not care for it at all. Because um, I was really excited to like see a potential Xbox competitor to Uncharted, but like mm -hmm. none of the the Laura just didn't seem like a identifiable character to just like relate to. Like I'm a rich billionaire whose fault it was an all yeah. archaeologist, and now he's dead. Now I've got no other choice but to go on a massive killing screen with, with dual pistols, yeah. find stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and then, like, I don't know, just all the stuff felt forced in there. I was like, I don't really care about Laura, I've never really honest. cared about Tomb Raider. Never even really liked the, the games the all that much. The original games were fun. I played the them. The original games were fun. But. And, what, I, well, I mean, if you think about it, like, plotline-wise, too, like, Laura never really had, like, a lot of character development in the past no. games. She was a pretty refined character. Like, she, you already knew who she was. She was just she was basically what would a... probably be called hot in the time of graphics being able to be as hot as it could be. She was just a hot badass. She, she was, was a blank slate, virtually. Like stuff. Yeah, yeah. She was yeah. a blank slate, like, gamer guys like this girl character who's shooting guns. Like, that was it. Yeah, that was I, it. And then they turned her into, like, an incel-loving <laughs> character. <laughs> um, so Crystal Dynamics' most recent game was the Avengers game, interestingly enough, um, which kind of, I don't think I don't think turned out the way that Square wanted it to. Um, it was supposed to be like a big game as a service game. And while I think it's technically still going, I don't think it turned the numbers that they were expecting for like an MCU, uh, you know, for, for a Marvel property game as a service. And mm -hmm. there's, there's some speculation out there about what this is really about, because like. Microsoft bought Rare back in like, I think it was 2003 for 300 million dollars, and that was almost 20 years ago. And now uh, Square just sold several studios and like some pretty large legacy IP. Speaking of legacy, Legacy of Cain was in there. Um, like IDOS, Crystal Dynamics and one of their own studios for th for like literally almost nothing. Like this is very cheap. Um, so there's some speculation out there. Well, there's a there's also a cringe part part of this uh because their, their press release said that this is to kickstart their uh their blockchain gaming uh that's what these funds were going to yeah. be used for <laughs> but but there's there's more speculation that this is actually to prepare square enix for an acquisition themselves that they're shedding their western um uh, assets because they're getting the prepared ones, to, yeah. to sell off their entire you know or the japanese side yeah yeah who do you think that would be Yes. Do you, a. Do you believe that? And B. Like, who do you think might might be the player? Uh, I don't believe that. I mean, I don't really know. I don't really have much of anything to say about it. I mean, it makes sense that they want to go that route, but I don't think it is. I think that they realize that they have a lot of IP that they're not utilizing. That mm -hmm. might as well just best sell it and maybe utilize those funds in other places for projects. Because mm -hmm. clearly, Square Enix is a completely different company than it was. Honestly, like worse than in like five years ago it feels oh, so yeah. different because they're yeah. now investing so much more into technologies and like so many different like i like 
titles and stuff like that. They're playing, they're putting out games that are for cultural relevancies and not just so much as you know the, the traditional stuff that they've always put out, like Final Fantasy. Maybe? They're focused on that as Maybe. a priority, but like other games, like it just feels like they're just putting out random like random bullshit. Go. Yeah. So did you see I don't uh know. if anybody bought them, I like I wouldn't be I I definitely don't think it's Microsoft. It's definitely not Nintendo. They've always been close with Sony. I kind of could see it, but I don't really. I think I think if they sold to anybody, it wouldn't be to some like primary gaming player. It might be to like a larger, like, like just you know, like capital. Sold off the Tencent. Maybe or or even maybe just uh maybe a very large company that doesn't even really have so much of a gaming stake yet, but wants one like a. I, I don't want to Apple's a p- poor example, but that's what I mean. Like a, like a larger technology company that's looking to get a piece of the pie and they're not really going to change them that much. They just want to have, you know, a stake in the game. But um, yeah, like a rare stake, medium rare stake. <laughs> yeah. yeah me, medium, medium is pretty good. Medium, medium rare, I'd say. Um, uh, okay, I could do medium, medium rare. Yeah. Did you see while we're talking with Square? Did you see what Yuji Naka had to say about Square last week? Uh, what game did he make again? Yeah. I, it was like a really long thread, right? Yeah. So, well, Yuji Naka is the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog. So he was with Sega okay, yes, for yes. like, you know, like 30 years. And then he, he left Sega and he joined Square for everybody listening who doesn't know who Yuji Naka is. Joined Square to make this game. I think it's called like, I think it's pronounced uh, like Balan's Wonderland. I think that's how it's spelled. B-A-L-A-N, yeah, I think. You're right, you're right. And it was kind of a big deal. Very... Like Yuji Naka's first game with a different company, you know. And then it, it came out last week from Yuji Naka himself that he was fired six months before the game was released and that they basically just shipped the game knowing, like, this isn't done. It hasn't had a director. Like, it's a flaming pile of crap, but we're just going to ship it anyway. Mm-hmm. And... So Yuji Naka sued them and then went as far as to say that Square Enix does not care about video games or gamers. Yeah, like, that's, yeah. like, serious. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, man. Like, it's especially big for, like, the, the, the business culture from where he's at. I'd imagine yeah. that, like, a lot of people or a lot of businesses are going to look at that and be like, I don't think we need to hire this guy for anything. I anymore. never hear of, like, Japanese game development drama. Like, and that's not that maybe that's because there's cultural barriers and I just, you know doesn't make it over to my ears per se but i would say it's because like japanese corporations are hella corrupt and i think i've seen <laughs> like a couple of like you know uh, twitter threads where people kind of like talk about how like those businesses just they, they they face value everything as like treating their like their their employees as valuable as they can which might be like a cultural thing because they have to but like on the on the deep nitty-gritty side of things like it's just not real money being I don't, I don't get it i was only i'm so uneducated on it to be honest but i think it's probably because like most of these companies know that they're not supposed to be trying to put their noses in places they know that they can get exposed for easily i mean i i've never seen person and this might upset some square enix fans but i i know they've had some successes recently you know final fantasy 14 obviously being a huge one um i've never seen square as a company that seems particularly passionate like like they make their games they release their games but like if you if you roll back like i don't know to like the the ps3 era like that whole that whole era i would say a lot of people thought that square was kind of like on a very downward trend you know like they were really struggling there in a lot of ways i can kind of agree with that and i think that's that square's not passionate I, i which i agree i think they're not passionate i think the developers are passionate for what they want to accomplish and I mean, whenever it comes to J- Japanese titles in the West, like it's always been like a you know relatively hit or miss like area, mm-hmm. uh, obviously. Um, but whenever it came to like Final Fantasy games, that what I've played, like some are good, but I would say there's way more bad than there is good in terms yeah. of Final Fantasy titles out there. That like I don't know, maybe crap Square is just like yeah, crap them out. It's like why, why are we still investing inside of this? And I think that's probably why the quality of Final Fantasy games have been going up recently. Because Final Fantasy XIV was a downward spiral of hell, uh, and now it's like one of the biggest titles. Thankfully, that that team actually listens. And mm-hmm. Final Fantasy XV was such a long road of development that, like, I'm not surprised 
that it didn't get the hype it deserved because I love Final Fantasy 15. It was phenomenal. I still need to play the DLC, and I heard the DLC is what makes the game even more complete. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Final Fantasy 16 looks pretty damn good so far. Um, so like as far as like Final Fantasy titles, like we haven't had a lot come out. I want to say these past five years, besides just the expansions for for uh, for Final Fantasy 14 and just 15 itself, and those have been really well claimed. So maybe like the drop in the amount of final fantasy square enix realized it needs to just put put a little bit more pressure on the brakes for that and start it investing the, other the value stuff. of the brain um, yeah yeah but like again random bullshit go like the stuff that they do sometimes with what they do publish is always like this... a weirdness a lot of like outriders that was an awful failure um, i mean i think it launched had, it did uh, pretty well and then it dropped off a cliff like literally in like two weeks like, well, they launched pretty well because it was free basically on Game Pass. And yeah. The game looked pretty promising. Well, I think it, it launched at, um, at like a then, pretty dead time. It happened to fall into like a really good window where there wasn't like anything coming out for like a month before it and like a month after it. Mm-hmm. I think um, if I could think of like the top three games that Square's actually put out, it would be uh, Final Fantasy, number one, obviously. Um, Life is Strange. I don't even know if that's even a good game. I see this <laughs> game get so many more sequels and so many freaking remasters. Yeah, I'm like, is this game even good? Why are they still selling this game? And then third um, was an accident, and then it got better because of Game Pass. Marvels, Marvels vs. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, like that, those are the only three games that I heard that is off the top of my head. That I, was it? Did they... I heard it was completely under, undersold. Yeah, I heard the writing and stuff is really, really good. Um... I, I didn't they make that Octopath Traveler game or whatever the heck it was called? Wasn't that like a pretty good hit on Switch? Yeah, they published it. I mean, like you're right, Octopath. It's also on Game Pass. Really, it is a really good game. Um, is but, it on like, multiple platforms now? Success, I didn't even know. Yeah. yeah okay. It launched on multiple platforms. Um, no, Octopath Traveler. I loved it. It was actually pretty cool. I didn't play too much of it. I kind of got a little bit too bored of the of the game like i just wasn't really in the mood for a turn-based game but in terms of just like the publishing like the commercial publishing those three games are the only things that they really have going for them yeah yeah i mean i i really feel like for the amount of money they must have paid to use the avengers license um and, and develop uh you know have crystal dynamics uh well-known studio develop all that time and resources to develop an avengers game i know some people mm-hmm. like that game but I don't, I don't think it did anywhere near the numbers that they wanted it to. And I feel like after that game, that's probably when they were like, we don't know what we're doing in the West. Like, we need to get out of this. Like, like we just we just we just yeah. had a, we took like one of the biggest licenses in the world and fumbled it. Like we we did something wrong. Yeah. And maybe this is a smart move. Maybe this is them saying this is what we know. Let's stick to it. And let's not, you know, waste. They probably wait. They probably lost. I'm going to say. I'm going to go out on a limb. I, I don't have an exact number. I have no source. But if you think of just how much that license costs and to have, you know, the size of Crystal Dynamics and the time, I'm going to say they probably lost, like, maybe even $100 million on that game. Like, I, I, I don't know. Yeah. No, I, I absolutely agree. And who knows? Like, you know, Square, I mean, like, I didn't mention Kingdom Hearts in that list, but only because Kingdom Hearts 3 sucked. Um <laughs> Like even school, even Kingdom Hearts fans. Well, what like, about Kingdom Hearts three X Y Z seven five? Um, repeating, like that version might yeah. be good. That version might be coming out pretty soon, exclusively for the PS six because for, they're for still the trying Vita. to figure out how the hell they're going to launch Kingdom Hearts four. Um, I mean, like they already had some sort of tie in relationship with Disney because of Kingdom Hearts. Maybe they utilize that to their advantage. Um, and yeah. who knows? Like maybe. You know, for all we know, maybe Disney wanted to include Marvel's the uh, Marvel. I keep saying Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy within Kingdom Hearts that it maybe not. It, it was probably just production that just was to be used and licensing that wasn't able to be used within the game. They may they might have just moved that over into its own standalone game. Yeah, it was a very left field game too. I don't think anybody was like one asking for it, but it's video games. I don't like to use that argument, but realistically, who was like, wow, I really need a Guardians of the Galaxy well, video game um and but it, at the same time like it does kind of surprise me and this doesn't have to be exclusive to square um that marvel hasn't 
try to crack the video game front more than they have because obviously they've you know traditionally started with comics they own a huge chunk of the space there they now dominate hollywood and video games seem like a natural extension and you know there's been some great marvel game you know insomniac spider-man uh insomniac's wolverine i think looks looks great um but other than that there hasn't been too many like I, that i can think of like flashy marvel games <sighs> man you know what's really flashy a really good marvel game uh the original hulk on the original xbox that game was awesome <laughs> that was uh, before the so MCU. wolverine yeah, uh, before the MCU, MCU, and the, well, there was like a Wolverine game that was really awesome too, and obviously Spider Man Two, that was an awesome game uh, back in the day. Was but, it? I think yeah. I've seen like gifs from that Very Wolverine game. I think it was a tie-in with his like Origins movie or whatever. And yeah, it was. It I think was I remember seeing Wolverine in that game like dive like into like a helicopter and like explode it, like like just I don't know, like some crazy yeah. over the top like. <laughs> Basura's Wrath kind of stuff. I remember playing it. I remember playing it vaguely. I liked it. It wasn't a bad game, and I think it gets like a lot of credit to the to the OG gamers these days. Um, and I was like on the 360. I think I need I need to double yeah, check. I think you're right. I, that's the same game I'm thinking of, and I heard it was underrated. I but am you, excited though. When it comes to Marvel games, I'm really excited for that Insomniac Wolverine game. Like me that, too. like. Like still, god dang, dude! That's the a game. chills that I got whenever they announced that, dude. That's a Ooh. game that I feel like could get me to buy a PS5. I'm at a point in my life where I kind of want to avoid buying any more consoles because I just spend all my time gaming on my PC. But that might be one that, like, if it comes out and it's like a masterpiece, I might be like, all right, screw it, I just gotta play this because I think it's they. I think oh. they said it's gonna be like mature, like they're they're not backing off oh. from like the you know. Oh. Like, the glo- the gore that we expect from a Wolverine game. Yeah. That's good. It speaking of consoles, uh the other day when we were playing Overwatch 2 and I was late because I was setting up my PS5. Mm-hmm. Uh, I swear to God, I need to apologize for PlayStation and Sony because it's like this is the st- I still do think it is actually a stupid design, but I said it was stupid because I couldn't put it together properly. Uh like the stand kept coming off. I'm like, why does the stand keep coming off? Turns out I put it on uh, upside down. You know what though? Uh, it's so funny thought, yeah. that you say that because there was a thread and maybe maybe you started this thread and i didn't know it there was a thread on reset era this past week and it was like i'm sorry no, sony it's like it was like um which is a very pro sony forum but it was like i'm sorry sony but the stand design for the playstation 5 is absolutely awful <laughs> that was like the it name really of the is. thread and no i it is absolutely awful i hated it so i still hate it man like i get it but like I don't care about that level of versatility where I have to like manually do it. Yeah, I get it. It's like effortless. It's stu- like it really should not be that much of a big deal. And that didn't sway me from not buying a console. I think that's a stupid argument to have. Like, oh, I yeah. can't just stand it when I want to. I, it stays in one <laughs> damn place the entirety of you its know, lifeline. Like this so, life so many but consoles have have tried to like make that. Not not necessarily the best stand, but the okay, the PS5 stand. I remember like the Xbox 360 have. being uh you know like this way or this way, the GameCube having a handle. Like there's all like all these consoles seem to do something. And at the end of the day, I feel like 99.9% of gamers want to stick the thing near their TV and just play video games on it. Or like and yeah, stream Netflix. They like, do. like they don't want to like it's not like engineering and architecture. It's like give me a box that plays video games for God's sake. I I think it's really stupid too that like if you, I I don't like putting my consoles in stand mode but my Series X that that in stand mode looks way better than just having this fridge. wide ass box fridge literal that, like this is an actual fridge when you lay it horizontally that is huge I don't like it like that I think in stand mode it looks great I don't use discs so that doesn't bother me but like dude when it came to my PlayStation Five I'm just like I, I want, I'm an idiot because I was I had the, I was playing Final Fantasy fourteen for like a good like five hours on my on my PS Five and it was upside down the whole time I had no idea because <laughs> um, I was talking shit about it to my roommate I'm like dude look how dumb this is and I was like what if I try it on the other side and I noticed that the groove fit in with the, with the with the plastic properly and I'm like oh okay I'm just I'm, I, I'm just an absolute idiot so I have these these headphones and these are like I I don't want to sound like bougie but these are 300 dollars headphones they're from an australian company oh, called bougie. nura no I, I got sent they got sent to me for free for for like a, a review oh now he's bragging no 
but this is this is the this is it's a similar story. So I got sent these headphones to do a review, right? And they got these. I don't know if you can see it or not, but they have like earbud kind of things like built into them. What? That fit in. So so that's like one of the big features, right? Is like is so anyway. So I'm doing my unboxing video and I, like this is like sponsored content, basically. I'm doing my unboxing video and I look at them and I'm like, I'm like, oh, you know, I'm going to put these on and I put them on and I'm giving my first impressions. So I'm like, man, this feels like, I don't know, like it's way different. Like, I'm not used to this. This feels like, you know, like kind kind of weird. Like it's going to take a lot of getting used to. I post a video and some like the very first comment when I posted it, like you put them on backwards, you idiot. Because like the one is funny because they're, ear- <laughs> they're angled a certain way to fit into your ears. And I just put them, I put them on the opposite way. So it felt so awkward in my ears, but I was just like, I don't know. How's I supposed to know? You know, I'm sure it tells you somewhere, but I wasn't really paying attention. That is such an interesting design. It kind of makes me uncomfortable thinking about it. That like, I just know your ears are being pegged with this like, over the ear pillow hey, thing dude I, i'm not like i can't speak i can't say that I, I listen to a lot of music and stuff but i can't say i'm like an audio file on the hardware side mm-hmm. but with that said these are by far the best sound quality headphones that i've ever had and they're super like they're, they're durable as all hell too like you can do anything with them like they're for 300 well, bucks you better hope in, so with your wired in i hope that they're also really that good too they i go wireless I, I don't you just take the cable out the and, yeah yeah. Oh, okay. That's okay, cool. that's good. Well, I'm not an audiophile myself, but I do care about what kind of headphones I do yeah. buy. I think the AirPods are actually still really, really good, um, despite the fact that they're just they're just made so dumb that they always fall on my ear. Like I can't work out in these, so I usually end up using my Sony uh, 500s. I think I forget which one these are, but I got them on a really good Best Buy sale. They were like 75 percent off, brand new. Mm-hmm. So I was like, dude, heck yeah, man. I'm not Best Buy, it was uh, Amazon. And they were also free. My coworkers bought it for me too. So I thought that was that was That's really cool. cool of them. Uh, but these things are like super Sony's awesome, known actually. for having like, really good headphones. They have really good hardware. I mean, like yeah. uh, we could talk shit about PlayStation, like bad like decisions on like their yeah. their how they sell their, things, but their like phones they're really and their head and their audio equipment and stuff is known for being like top tier. Oh, yeah. I think their TVs are like extremely overpriced, though. I think they're the only ones in the market that I'm a bit of a, of a video file. Uh, and like Sony TVs are good. They're still better out there. But for like the price and the value about what you're getting in most Sony TVs is like super outrageous. Yeah. But they still look good. Yeah. Um, and it's crazy to me that they have like such an entry level cost efficient like console. I mean, like four hundred dollars for a console is pretty cheap for the most part, These days, especially yeah. for like this new generation. Not bad. I think so. Yeah. So good. So, God, these things. Awesome. I love them so much. They're super lightweight and they don't bother me whenever I'm working out in them either. Yeah. So I tweeted this. <laughs> Sorry, I was, no, we're good. I tweeted this. And I want to bring attention to it because a lot of people I don't think know who Embracer is. I, but th- I'm just going to name a few of the developers and publishers, like publishing studios that Embracer now owns because they're a relatively new name on the gaming front. So they now own THQ, IDOS, Crystal Dynamics, Gearbox, Borderlands, 3D Realms, Duke Nukem, uh, Saber Interactive, Gunfire, Flying Wild Hog, who are like the Shadow Warrior developers uh deep silver that includes free radical the old time splitters folks uh hopefully you don't remember them for haze uh volition the saints row and red faction people and like like tons more that is like that's a big freaking gaming company dude like yeah there really is it kind of makes me concerned about like what is they're going to do with those titles because what when was what was their last title that they actually uh, who what's my out? embracer like have they actually like helped these studios put something out recently or are they just holding on to them that's what yeah i i don't know i i think they're gonna this is my take i i I don't know but it would seem best to me if they were like a more hands-off like we'll set your budgets you guys you know like like Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, they don't have a, like, within themselves, they don't really have a gaming background. So they haven't built a gaming company. They basically bought gaming companies. So, mm-hmm. oh, like I don't know. I, th- I think, well, they, 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 they <laughs> built one, but yeah. 
Well, it took them like 20 years to do it, literally. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, they launched the Xbox, they launched the Xbox 360, you know, like they, you know, they've, they've done, they've been around the gaming space for quite some time. Going back to, I mean, Windows back in the day. I mean, actually, no, you're right. They they built Age of Empires, uh, Flight Simulator, and stuff like that too. So those were all in house. Yeah, those were definitely in house. All right, so let's move on to the uh, let's move on to the Twitch discussion. So there was a big leak this past week, and I have a lot of mixed feelings on this. Uh, there was a big leak this past week. Bear in mind, I say leak because people forget that there's a leak that says that Twitch is considering taking. Um, the majority of their partners who get a 70 to 30 percent so that by that i mean the streamer gets 70 percent the platform gets 30 percent of each subscription and dropping them from 70 30 to 50 50 uh, so cu effectively cutting their subscription revenue uh, offering them increased ad revenue incentives and then removing uh, the exclusivity clause. So, like, you, you can go ahead and multi-stream or stream wherever you want. Uh, and basically, like most things Twitch-related these days, uh, everybody, you know, blew up about this and viewed it as Twitch stream. Twitch basically taking money directly out of the pockets of streamers, I think, was, was the sentiment. Like, you're, you're giving us a pay cut, essentially. Mm -hmm. um, so what what do you think about all this? It's hard for me to like have any kind of opinion on it because I'm not too like I think knowledgeable to speak on behalf of it. Mm -hmm. But I think that opening up the ability to restream and still be partnered is a really good idea. Mm -hmm. Uh because now that just widens audience opportunities and you know I would say that Twitch probably made these decisions because they've lost a lot of really good talent that were helping them push their numbers. Like Saikuno just today announced that yeah. he's going to be on YouTube now. Majority of, like, I think, all 100 Thieves is on YouTube now. Uh, you got Valkyrie, Courage, uh, and uh, a couple of other people on there, Brooke. Um, and now you have like Saikuno over there and like, a whole entire group of people that just bring these streamers are going over there so twitch i think might be reacting honestly to that it makes sense to like help their partners stream yeah. elsewhere and maybe that's if this is twitch also realizing that they can't be this strict anymore yeah but the 50 50 thing is still a little bit drastic i think they need to be like this is a leak so we don't know for sure but if it is right they need to be a little bit transparent about why they're doing it yeah and they need to be I don't want to use the word authentic. I don't think it will be authentic. I don't think Twitch has been authentic in a very long time. That's but true. Just a J, just but just saying like, hey, we we're like we you don't have to admit you're losing viewership, but you have to admit at least the very most part you can help these communities reach a lot, like help these people reach larger communities. Yeah, I think I think the problem for Twitch, well, Twitch has lots of problems, but the problem for Twitch is a there it's never been a profitable platform, and I think Amazon at this point is saying like it's time to put up or shut up. Like we need this platform to break even or, or turn a profit. Like we're sick of losing money. We paid through like, it never has. That's like, a, that's like I mean, I mean maybe back in like the days since Amazon bought it, maybe in the days when it was a, you know, booming startup company, just in TV and stuff. It, it very well, I'm sure it did. Mm -hmm. Um, But I think the problem for Twitch is a, it's never been profitable. Uh, and then B, I, I think the problem that, and another thing I should mention is, that, yeah, again, this is a leak and, and I like your, uh, I don't know if you can see your camera on the stream right now, but <laughs> I think you're getting an internet spike or something. It's like censored. Jada. Oh yeah, I, I definitely am. Oh, there you go. Now it's better. As soon as you said, I definitely am. It, it got all better. Um, that killed my train of thought. Where the heck was I going? <laughs> you're saying that, uh, Twitch isn't making money. Uh, yeah. And that that was like that's kind of like where you were at. Yeah, but then I was I was moving on past it. Oh my god, it bothers me. Um, dude, what was I gonna say? Like I just went like brain dead. Which isn't making money, but I think so. One of the things that I mentioned again, it was a leak, but like I heard that Twitch has not been giving this seventy thirty um, subscription split 
to like anybody for like quite some time because they they knew basically like this isn't a practice we want to continue so this is kind of something mm-hmm. that on, behind the scenes is actually kind of like a long time coming like they're not really giving it to anybody anymore um mm-hmm. but i i also saw somebody did uh devin nash did some math of how mo- how little twitch actually makes from subscriptions and like when he actually broke down the math and it was insane like for a multi-billion dollar company they're making like it's like less than like one million dollars like like a month on subscriptions it's like abs- which mm-hmm. is absolutely absurd to think for a billion dollar company which everybody thinks like twitch subscriptions are so important and as a streamer they are but like on they the are, twi- yeah. on, on the twitch side it's all about ad revenue like it's literally just like that's all that matters because the subs are so such a small percentage of their their revenue so that's why they're trying to put more focus on on these ad incentives for streamers it's like we don't you know it's not about the subs it's about for from a business standpoint it's about the ads i think yeah. a lot of twitch's problems as a platform that they're really facing when compared to like youtube or even facebook is those platforms have so many ways to get to get people and keep people on the platform and and expose those people to live streams and they have endless potential for that because there's already billions upon billions of people using Facebook, using YouTube for other reasons. All they have to do is migrate those people to live streams. Twitch has, which has been its strength, but it's now becoming its weakness, zero ability to get anybody on to go to twitch.tv unless you want to watch a live stream. Like they need to find some way to make Twitch a true, like a broader reaching platform or make it like a true social network somehow because they're they're go- they're going to be limited um and, and some some there's going to be purists that will say well no that's what gives twitch its sense of community is that it's just a live streaming platform and that's what it is and you know um and that may be true but that's a that's a limitation as well and as competition uh steals twitch talent over time like youtube very much is doing i saw disguised toast say today that he knows of at least five more prominent streamers that already have deals with with YouTube gaming that are waiting to be like like they're they're, they're done deals yeah um so I, for for me like if, if Twitch is going to like evolve it, it has to broaden its broaden its appeal i know some people will be like no like i you know i don't want it to like i want it to be the you know pog champ spamming you know like kind of thing but yeah features Mm -hmm. is a good way of putting it they don't need to change their demographic really they need to offer more reasons to go to twitch and then like get people to get people onto twitch and then to watch live streams not going there to just watch live streams i think they're they're maxing out that audience it's interesting to say it because I th- I agree with you one hundred percent. Like making it more of like a, a a more communicative social platform rather than size, just again like the current way that it's going right now. That's an interesting idea. I think like it, right now it's currently really hard for gamers to really find a, a place that they could call home. I mm-hmm. I would say Twitch and Twitter are those two places. And yeah. as far as like those two locations right now, Twitter is clearly going to be going through lots of major changes, whether that's cultural or even if that's just something Elon's going to be doing here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Um, And maybe that's Twitch's opportunity to kind of seize that moment and, you know, try and rebuild and rebrand, not rebrand, rebuild and add those additional feature sets because gamers are going to be slowly kind of like find looking for new places to be at. And if Mm -hmm. YouTube is currently that place, which, I don't know how it isn't to begin with. YouTube is such a bigger platform with significantly more offerings, despite the fact that streaming on it is awful still. Yeah, it has a like, long way to go. The fact that people can't... It has wise. a way long way to go. Like, the fact you can't host others, me. Like, you can't, like, just see what these other streamers are supporting other communities for. Like, that bothers me still. I like, think... It's so weird that these giant companies can't move just a little bit faster. But I yeah. also understand that these even these big companies are limited. Like I know the Windows team had I think like ten developers on it. Like I'm not even kidding. Um, <laughs> I believe. So, you. Like it's, yeah, the, the guy who was on it, he was if I was trying to remove computers. Um, 
but I, I want to see YouTube develop more. But at the same time, I also don't, I don't like what YouTube is doing as well. Um, and that has to do a lot of it, right? whether that's censorship, whether it's horrible, horrible software features that just should be available right now. Victor moved significantly faster than YouTube ever did. Um, and then you're cutting up really bad. You sound like a robot right now. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're better now. Your okay, voice cool. was getting really robotic um, there. Okay. Uh, yeah, sometimes this is internet quality or whenever I use my Surface laptop. That's what I usually do to take these, uh, these podcasts. But now everything's like freezing up on me. I don't know what's going on. Ooh, I can hear you really you go. good now. You're clear. Okay. Um, but like I was saying, like just the, the, the major issues that YouTube has to be successful, they're not working on it. So I really hope YouTube can potentially pick things back up. Because yeah. I don't like going to YouTube. I don't like going to their app. I particularly don't like going to their app because it's like awful. They want you to pay for YouTube premium and I don't give mm. a damn about it. Um, and like Twitch is like free. Like I don't have to have an Amazon, like a, like an Amazon prime subscription to watch things in like picture in picture mode, mm -hmm. or I can just like listen to it while my phone's locked. Like while See, I work out, I like, think I, like those things matter to me. I think you're right in the sense that like, I, I think what kills people about, about YouTube is that, the, and it kills people, but it's also an advantage for them, I think, is the problems that YouTube live streaming has seem much more solvable, like easily solvable than the problems that Twitch has. Twitch has like major like what features do we need to build to an attract like entirely new audiences and to get people to spend money on our platform. YouTube already has like robust like ad revenue, like like they're good there. And they've got like all like they've got all these good things. They need to figure out like community issues. How do we get people? Yeah. How do we how do we get people to, you know, build a community here, like spam emotes in chat to build that hype? How do we how do we create raids and hosts? How do we do gifted subs like that should not in all reality, like that should not be like a major undertaking. It seems to be because they haven't done it yet. But this seems more solvable than like, how do we make Twitch, how do we get entirely new audiences onto Twitch? Which to me, I think the answer is um they, they really need to like integrate Twitch like further into like other Amazon services. Like I don't know why like I you know they got Amazon Luna on Twitch now. But I, I don't know why like and I, I think this ship has sailed, like so it's too late to do this. Like I don't know why Twitch and and Prime Video like weren't the same thing like why wasn't that like one service like just just watch whatever movies you want or whatever live streams makes you sense. want I mean, um, it makes sense just the same time now. like that would i feel like that would also like make things too ambiguous because like twitch is a dominant streaming platform for gaming and yeah clearly it's expanded since well, i think that's like, why they the did number it. one the number one like trending thing all the time now is just chatting mm -hmm. um yeah. but like dominantly like across every single game like every single like category Twitch has, gaming is the number one thing. Mm -hmm. So I think like I don't think it's I, I disagree. I would say like the the thing Amazon needs to figure out is probably just like better original content. They need to be able to treat Twitch as like a premier destination and not just yes. a just a like a streaming platform. So mm -hmm. I, I could kind of agree with you on that. What yeah. if Amazon invested more of its like production and time and quality that they do in like prime video into Twitch? Like what if yeah. they like cared a little bit more about these big time streamers and offer them something bigger. Like mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure they would have been able to secure these like stronger contracts with like these big people like Tim the Tapman, mm -hmm. um, Jack Courage, um, if they offered to kind of support them going forward and treat them as if they were products of their brand, which one of they are, but one of to, the things to, sorry I didn't mean to interrupt you. You're good. One yeah, of the I'm things you hit the nail on the head in a way, because one of the things that all like almost all the streamers that have left Twitch for YouTube gaming have said is it's slightly different approach worded a different way. But they've all said that one of the things one of the reasons they left to go to YouTube is because YouTube did not um, it was much less restrictive in like you need to stream for this many hours a month whereas twitch is like hardcore about it like you need to stream like 50 hours a week every week blah 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 blah, blah. Mm -hmm. 
And what all those creators and streamers say is they have all these ideas for other projects, like big that require their time and production and energy and, and that they want to work on. And it's like, that's what they're interested in. Like, well, if I'm streaming for eight, nine, 10 hours a day, six days a week, I'm never going to be able to do those projects, which are going mm -hmm. to advance my career. And it's really what I personally want to do. Plus, all those things can be monetized. Don't forget, you know, like, look, look what Mr. Beast is doing. And he's just doing that on his own. Yeah. Um, like, like, imagine if Twitch was like, hey, hey, uh, you know, if, if, if it's too late for this one. But hey, Ludwig, like, you're blowing up. We're going to give you this much money to do, like, basically be Twitch's Mr. Beast. Like, we want you to do, like, crazy stuff. Like, and every single Friday, you're going to have this crazy thing, you know, and it's going to premiere on Twitch every single week. It's going to be, like, like you said, like, original content. Like, to put it in people's minds, I need to be on Twitch every single Friday because they have yep. this, like, awesome show, whatever it may be, rather than just, like, oh, I've got 20 minutes. I think I'll go to Twitch and maybe try to find something. Like, yeah, that, that kind of thing. And that's like the hardest thing. And I have that problem with YouTube right now also is like, where do I want to go for my, my time tonight? I've got an hour or two to spare to kind of just like sit back and watch content. And like, I already have my subscriptions that I already know exist on YouTube. So if I wanted to go watch two videos of Hidden Xperia recapping Halo, recapping anything that is like, you know, from other places, I want to go watch tech reviews. Like I know where to go for YouTube and I can skip mm -hmm. a couple of days and know that ahead of time. So YouTube's already got that covered because YouTube is its own universe of DVR. So mm -hmm. like, I don't have to worry about missing out on that. Watch Absolutely. Later. Like, which it's just like, I don't want to go to like a previous, you know, past streams and just kind of like see what's new. Nobody there. does, that. Nobody nobody does, does that. that. Nobody wants to do that. Cause it's like, what's, what are we missing there specifically? So and it sucks too. And I think I've already expressed my frustrations about like the Lord of the Rings Amazon stuff, but like, it's <laughs> yeah. like they want to invest in like these things no one asked for. I hate using that, but here I am using it again, but literally no one asked for this version of Lord of the Rings. And it's just like of all the things you put your time, money, and production and marketing into, it's shit. And you could have <laughs> kept these really awesome streamers who are actually giving you more brand awareness. Mm hmm much more so you know youtube's not doing anything in this space either it, it, that's what made mixer so interesting is that they were getting those those streamers involved mm -hmm. they were getting like uh pro players involved they were getting uh their streamers they got shroud involved in like game pass marketing yeah, ads and stuff like that like those were kind of cool like mixer was yeah. ahead of its time yeah just too bad it was managed by microsoft <laughs> um but in this case it's just like i hope that somebody's like in this game of tug of war right now somebody comes up with something valuable because Gaming right now is like in a weird position of like, what, what are we waiting for? Like, it feels very mm -hmm. flat. I like that. I like that analogy. What are we waiting for? I like that. Um, I was going to say something and I forgot something about. Oh, uh, I, I see. I see C Shive Alex at said, you know, it's a long way. To, uh, YouTube has a long way to go before it will be truly friendly to new streamers. 100% agree. And like, it's interesting that Twitch does, I think, significantly more for the smaller streamers, which is good, actually. I like that they attempt to like try and do more grassroots efforts. As for YouTube, I don't even know what YouTube even does. Yeah, they just sign people. They give away. Well, they literally give well, away money. I mean, one of the things that YouTube has going for it is slightly. If you're a live streamer on YouTube, you stand a better chance. I'm not. And I'm not saying that they do a better job than Twitch of having like startup features as a new streamer. But you have a better chance of being discovered by streaming a given game because like every single game category isn't already dominated uh, on YouTube. Whereas the same thing on Facebook, right? Like on Twitch, you know, if you want to stream almost any game that, that there's already like that, that, that category is already spoken for. If you want to stream Apex Legends, if you want to stream Call of Duty, if you want to stream Minecraft, if you want to stream Pokemon, like you're going to be so far down, you know, the, the list, so to speak, nobody will ever find you. Whereas if you're on YouTube, yep. if you're on Facebook or whatever, you have a better chance. Um, but what I was going to say, it kind of ties into this, this Devin Nash again, Devin Nash, by the way, is a really good. Uh, he owns a marketing agency, a gaming marketing agency, and he has all sorts of really good videos on YouTube, uh, doing like all sorts of analytics about streaming and gaming and stuff. Uh, I was listening to one of his videos today and he said, like he did this, like he did it, like literally during this video, he pulled up the number of uh, like Twitch viewers and, and compared to Twitch streamers today, uh, just just on Twitch. And uh, 
55% when he looked at it, this was like at a random moment, 55% of the total users on Twitch, the entire platform, like at that given moment, were in three people's streams. It was like XQC, um, like some Spanish speaking creator. And I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just can't remember the name. I'm unfamiliar. And I, I, I can't remember the third. But but he was like, think of how like, think of how like bad that is that like the whole platform is reliant on like literally like a handful of people at any given moment. Like that, that make that put that's not it's not really the way Twitch wants it either. But it's like the reality of it. Like mm -hmm. like, like all of our ad revenue is coming from three accounts. Like that's not good. Like that's that's a problem. Like I was about to say, like, if Twitch loses this XQC, I think that's like the entirety of Twitch, like just moving over if to they YouTube lost, at that like, point. If they lost like XQC, Nick Merckx, and Pokimane, they would be up a creek. Like, I think really XQC bad. would be. I think XQC would be like just be the nail in the coffin because, like, I'm not saying Pokimane, Pokimane, and Nick Merckx are you know lost causes, yeah. but they they significantly drop viewership, so that would technically mean like viewership for them might go up. Yeah, but like at that point, like XQC is such a marginal like not even a marginalized character like, he is an like in my opinion unfortunately <laughs> he he is unfortunately like the representation of twitch culture like like yep. he, he is like the embodiment of it and it is what it is i mean it is what it is yeah that's just cold hard fact <laughs> <laughs> once he leaves bro i'm telling you like twitch is like gonna be like starting a fire oh it, big so. time big time well, yeah. some people some analysts think that that Twitch has maybe like like five years left before it gets shut down. That like they act. Some people honestly think that the Amazon is like basically giving Twitch an ultimatum at this point. Like if you're not breaking even in five years, like you're done. Like we don't we don't need you. Like or Amazon, but who knows? I don't know, Alex. I disagree with that. Alex just said that Twitch needs to spend a little bit more money on smaller streamers. I, I mean, like, I'm not saying that they shouldn't do that, but I don't think that would help them drive success because at this point, no one's necessarily looking for new and upcoming streamers to do anything. If anything, they're just looking to see what's going on next. And, like, usually the, the way that those people just pop up out of the blue is just based on virality and, like, now association. Like, the only way you will ever find, like, any kind of success on your own is association. Like, whenever it came to... um what's his name z laner like he mm -hmm. started playing with doc z lane had like a lot of like opportunity in the past but until he started playing with doc that's whenever yeah. he finally got signed to optic that's whenever he got signed in the almost into the all of the top tier many of which have jumped to youtube now but like those like streamers that you all know is legendary now dr disrespect shroud nick Merckx, uh you know T tyler one's kind of an oddity because he played mostly by himself but um, they they all did cross contamination, and I mean that in a nice way, though. Like like playing, exposing each other, building each other up. Tim the Tapman, Ninja, Courage, they built each other up together. <laughs> Literally, t like Tim got famous off of Jack because Jack was signed into Optic, and then like eventually, like that just became a, a, a letter of association. Like Jack is best friends with Nate Shot. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's because like there was a point in time where like Twitch had an era of like Hollywood rising where everybody like yeah. back. I mean, like the fifth, like the forties like and fifties, people wanted to be on cinema. Yeah. Like the the years of two thousand ten between 20, 2017 was like the year everybody wanted to be a streamer. PUBG and Fortnite. Or, yep, that was when everybody pretty much blew up. I do think, and like you said, most of the streamers that blow up now, it's either through yeah cross cross referencing and and brand association, getting signed to like a major org or something like that, or it's going viral, like you said. It's because they blew up on Reddit because some clip or something like literally got viewed Who's by, by three hundred million people. People do live stream fails, crap like that, or or a TikTok, like you know some some crazy clip from your stream goes viral on TikTok or whatever. It's, it's, not, that, it's not on Twitch. Like it happens off site. Happens and off site. There's a there's like this meme that went around where this guy was saying like I would literally date 2D anime girls more than I would date you as a 3D actual woman. And it, it was a meme, but he went so viral. I was like, yeah. you know what? This guy was funny, and I watched more of his content on his TikTok. And I'm like, I'm just gonna join his Discord. I was in his Discord <laughs> for like five hours the other night. I stayed up from like 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. that <laughs> night. It was awesome. Um, but like as far as as far as like association, it's just it's interesting right now. I think we're at that point where 
Twitch streamers are now commercialized even deeper than they will have ever been in the past. And it's just going to keep going up from here. Yeah. And sure. now we're going to start seeing more Hollywood, more um, high record label like associations pop up out of the blue because they're going to see the value of that I mean, commercialized industry. Dr. And Microsoft is ahead of the game right now with commercializing everything. Dr. Disrespect and FaZe Rug were on stage at the NFL draft last weekend. Yep. Like that's that's a big deal. Literally, Drake is the co-owner of 100 Thieves. Yeah. Yeah. There's a few other Honestly, uh, weird celebrity like gaming org. I think it's like Shaq. What did Shaq own part of? I can't remember. I don't know if it was him, but there is another basketball oh, he does. player. He, he does. He does. He does. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know what org it is. Though. It's probably like a minuscule amount. It's probably like 1% or something. But a I don't really know. I, but nobody likes a gaming. Gaming by the year 2030, like the landscape is going to look exactly what it looks like for like the Netflix streaming wars. Yeah. And like yeah. just the just the high element drama of it all. But like it, at least these are these will be gamers at the end of the day. Yeah. Like I would I would trust Tim the Tatman in on a stage more than I would trust some like self-inserted Hollywood actor or something like that. <laughs> Um, well, depends on who the actor is. Like, if they Doc, put Keanu Reeves up on stage, we're good. We've yeah. already seen the success that happens. If they but, throw Jim Carrey up there, we're good. Yeah. Put Doja Cat up there, I don't really know about that. She is funny, though. Doc has made a great point, and he said this several times, and, you know, it's, it's kind of a hot take. When you think about it, it's an interesting take. Um, NRG, yeah, I believe you're right. Um, he, he has said that, like, he's like, let's see Jimmy Fallon try to be entertaining for six to eight hours a day, five <laughs> to six, six days a week. And he makes a good point. He's like, this job is very difficult at the high level of that, that, you know, somebody like him or Tim or whoever yeah. is that it's, they go live for almost every single day for six to eight hours. And like, we look to these entertainers, like a, like a late night show. They have, they have to be funny for like 45 minutes. That's mm -hmm. it. You you know? engaging. Yeah, that's it. And it, I'm not trying to put them down. They're really good at what they do. But it's an interesting perspective. I was watching one of the VTubers that I've like I discovered over TikTok naturally. Every, every sentence it starts that way. It's, 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 what's about to come thereafter is bad. Yeah. No, no, it wasn't bad. She said some pretty like funny things, but she like it was interesting because today she actually spoke about like commercializing VTubers. And I was like, I wasn't expecting it because she's just made I, some like pretty weird content around in the past. But she was actually talking very well spoken today. I was like, what the hell? The what problem, the problem that I see with VTubers is that it's going to be taken over by already commercialized characters like like Sonic the Hedgehog, like Mario, like 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 I don't think work. like Pikachu. I, that, I don't I'm think telling you, work, I'm no. calling it right now. Mayor Reynolds on the Beyond Nemesis podcast. That's the future of VTubers. I don't think it'll happen because you gotta one, those characters need to be identifiable with their own elements to yeah. them, right? So, yeah. you know, you can't just say, oh, there's gonna be a VTuber of Jimmy Fallon, right? Now we gotta yeah. like, find, figure yeah. out how Jimmy Fallon's gonna be like popular. And, and I think these people know that. You can't just like self insert because you know that's gonna make money. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where Hololive comes in. Are you familiar with who Hololive is? I have heard the name, but I don't know so, what it is. Hollow Live is a corporation that pretty much is is an agency for the most part, but they put together crazy, crazy shit, dude. They like they they get VTubers like uh, stages to VTubers like VTubers freak me out. To be, to be completely transparent, I, the whole concept creeps me out. I love VTubers, bro. They're, I think if, at the end of the day, they're thing. more they're yeah no one hundred percent totally understand. It's just anime girls with like really big chests. That's usually like, what it is. Yeah. It That's usually what it is. <laughs> But they that's that's kind of the gimmick. That's kind of the joke that they own and they understand. Yeah. And that's how you know how to choose which VTuber you want to associate with. And this is this is where I'm gonna get to like the hollow life part of things, is that they they hire and sign contact like uh, people who are you know have identifiable strengths. And it's a Japanese company too. So um I know like the, the idol industry is like not the wave anymore, but in the past it was just like you can't just keep signing idol after idol after idol to make sure who's who's the next big hit. Um, in this case, for for VTubers, they're very specific on who they choose on being an, a, a Hololive uh, member. So she was talking about it, and somebody was like, "Hey, do you think you'll ever be able to like work with Hololive?" And she's like, "Oh, no, never." She was just like, "They're a big, huge corporation who have a very specific I, like place in the game right now when mm -hmm. it comes to the VTuber industry." And I think VTubers are going to get significantly bigger because now Hololive is going to start expanding. Like VTubers are going to be massive because now you don't have to rely on the the 
th this. You don't have to roll. You don't have to be this anymore. Yeah. You can have a great personality, be ugly you can play behind a the camera. You can yeah, play a you play a character, and that's what people. I think that's what the newer generation wants. And you know, despite despite what it is, that's going to play a big, huge part in the metaverse. Look at look at Doc. I mean, he's he's been doing not not as a VTuber, but he plays a character. Yeah. Um, and interestingly enough, this is you want to hear a funny. Maybe this is funny. Maybe this is not funny. But generational difference. I, I, I'm going to take this insult to to myself and and chalk it up to. Uh, oh, Mary's admitting he's a boomer. Finally. Generational difference. I, I'm 35, man. I've never hidden that. Boomer. <laughs> I mean, it, it is what it is. So my wife's my my TikToks that I do and stuff are basically short form gaming news stories. That, that's what they are. I take a headline, I break it down really quick. That's like the TikTok content that I make. So my wife's i think he's like 12 11 or 12 we were at a family gathering recently and he's like he's like look going through his phone and he looks at me and he's like bro you need to make your videos like a lot more exciting like he just says it like flat out and i'm like what do you mean and he's like just like they're not exciting and i'm like I'm like it's news like how do, like what do you want me to do like like put on a clown nose and like jump up and down and it's, and, and and he's like Never mind. Don't change your videos. Like that's what he said. <laughs> it's like wet back. So, like, <laughs> but 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 like the, it, it, it like it, for like a younger audience or that generation, you know, he's twelve. Obviously, his views will change over time. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for yeah. characters and excitement, and you know, that's what v, and that's what VTubers time. can be. Like it's that I'm, type of thing. Well, VTubers aren't exactly people you want to get news from specifically. If well, anything, no. VTubers. But, I know. I know what you're saying. But the kids yeah. aren't looking for news anyway. They're, they're looking yeah. for exciting, funny, viral clips. It's interesting because, like, every time I would jump into, like, any streamer, it doesn't matter who you are. You could be a, you could be Tim the Tapman or you could be a VTuber. They're, like, the most uneducated people about, like, They never know what they're time. talking about. They ever. never know what they're talking about. They never know what's going <laughs> on. Me nuts. Like, I, yeah. like, I, oh, my God. I've worked so, so hard for, like, literally, I'm 35, at least, not, not, no joke, 20 years to have what I consider like a decent amount of knowledge about the gaming industry and to really understand it and to keep track of the developers and the personalities, you know, who works where and how things work. And I'm not claiming I'm a professional. I know I am, but I've worked very, very hard to stay up on what happens in the gaming industry. And then I hear people, prominent people nonstop, just like you said, you, you hit the nail on the head. They never know anything like days later, they'll be like, Whoa! Did you guys see that? Like Will Smith, like like slapped Chris, Chris Rock last night. <laughs> and it's like, dude, like I don't know why, but it, 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 hey, more power to him. Like whatever they've done, they've done it right. Imagine being so ignorant and so blissfully ignorant about everything that you could still remain that way and be a multi-million or hundred thousand I mean. dollar right. earning like player in the street in the gaming industry too. And it's just so clearly you did something. That I did not, and you won. You know, like. literally captured lightning in a bottle because it's just like you. Now it feels like you have to know everything that's going on to have a relevant conversation, and maybe that maybe it plays well to their hands because we. I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure you've watched Tim's like stupid ass takes a couple of times. I don't know if you've seen the mm. one about digging a hole and reaching the ocean, but Tim's just not a smart <laughs> person to begin with. No, it's not. <laughs> you need a lot. But he's super likable. That's he's super likable, but it's just like maybe that's like part of their character is just like being informed by their community on in, like maybe the community can like, well, I don't know what it's called. And whatever you, their like, accumulated mind could just like take advantage of that, that moment to like inform this person about what they know of. Well, I think it goes back to that, like reactionary thing. Like they, you know, they know that like if everybody's in there talking about it, they're going to get whoever that personality is to like look it up on stream and react to it. And there's, it's a genuine, like, community to entertainer interaction you know what i mean mm -hmm. oh um, yeah whereas i'm coming at it from a very different angle and like i'm trying to be like the informer and not everybody wants that some people want to yeah. be entertained and that's you it you give me really really strong alex jones vibes i don't know what it is oh jesus <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if i had papers that throw crap crap mega crap <laughs> They're turning the freaking frogs gay. Yeah. What? What? what what's? What's? What? The, the globalists. The, glo the globalists. The uh, Embracer Group. I've purchased. Hey man. Crystal Dynamics. <laughs> they're people on Blizzard are stealing everybody's breast milk and they're just drinking yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> ah, ah. Um. 
He just filed yeah, for Max, bankruptcy, you wouldn't know. by You're the Alex way. Alex Jones is number one tipper. He just filed for bankruptcy, by the way. Oh, Alex Jones? I don't... Yeah. I, He's, the dude's constantly like getting everything blocked off on him. I don't did, blame him. Did you ever see that that uh, that clip where his search history got revealed, like on TV, and it was like not at all? Uh... No. <laughs> I mean, like, how else can you be Alex Jones with the world's largest at like right jar ever, and like not have like a questionable search history? Yeah. Ah. <laughs> uh... That was okay. a good impression. I should do it more often. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, actually, no, you had a you did have a really good impression. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do the Alex Jones gaming show on Twitch. I'm gonna play Alex Jones. I'm gonna be a v, Alex Jones VTuber on Twitch. I'm gonna do gaming news as Alex Jones every night for an hour. <clears throat> You're not gonna beat your ass. <laughs> You've seen those videos where he's like on the street and people say things to him and he Dude, starts like sprinting I've, after people. I've like, watched literally. Alex Jones ironically and unironically there are two different low like there are two different spectrums of entertainment and information at the same time oh man oh, yeah. the, uh, some people and thought the, that alex jones was doom guy for the longest time and He's before anybody in chat helmet. like before anyone in chat tries to out me as like some sort of like conservative like conspiracy theorist you're right you got me this is my outing right now no i actually <laughs> caught never, red-handed. Like, yeah caught red-handed i've never actually like listened to like any like internet so like inter- anybody on the internet with a voice i've never listened to their opinions and like made them my own um all right let's talk about overwatch 2 a little bit let's let's uh, jump from alex jones to overwatch 2 while you're loading up overwatch 2 i'm gonna go load up the bathroom really quick oh boy with, uh, okay I'm, a, I'm gonna put up a, maybe never come back to the stream again after that oh no it'll be like like 20 seconds <laughs> be right back guys <laughs> I'm back. Okay. All right. Switching, switching back. Uh, so I know you and I both played some Overwatch 2 because you and I got at least a few games in together. It was some of my first games, so I had not played Overwatch for like two years. So it had been a while. But uh, what what did, what did you think? I don't know how much you played of it. Uh, I probably played like an hour I'm yeah. out an hour. Actually, no, probably two hours because I did uh, play uh, with one of my coworkers who's a huge Overwatch fan. Um, and yeah, that's about, I want to say about two hours of time, play time. Mm-hmm. I uninstalled it though. I needed to make room for did season you? two of Halo. Ooh. I played about probably six hours at this point. Um, I do think uh, there's, there's been vastly different opinions about this game. Everything from like, lol, like what a ripoff, what a scam. It's the same game. To oh my god, it plays totally different, and you know it's a brand new game. And I, I'm I, go ahead. I want to bring up calling the game a scam. It is a free freaking upgrade. Like it is free for everybody. Like I don't know where Blizzard messed up on like the communication for that, but the game is free if you own the game. <laughs> like you don't have to do anything. You don't have to buy the game, bro. And like, I, I remember posting of like, oh yeah, I got the, I got inside the beta and some like three P three of my Instagram friends who one was like a massive gamer. The other two, not so much massive gamers. They're like, oh dude, this game's a ripoff, dude. I'm not buying this. I'm like, it's free, dude. <laughs> like it, it, and mention. when you want to buy the game, I'm pretty sure they're going to cut the cost on how much you owe on buying the game. If anything, not, they're going to get separate excuse of which versions you want to buy. Not to mention, I, I'm definitely not convinced that um they're not gonna have some other release model for this game like in the somewhat near future game um, pass well that that that's a hundred percent like as long as that act uh, that that goes through it's gonna be on game pass but I, I also would not be shocked there's been data mined battle pass files so in the future there may be you know free to play battle pass model who who knows but yeah. um as far as the game itself 
the changes are significant. Like having one less tank and like a lot less stuns and uh, a lot less shields, like it definitely feels better. It feels like combat feels rewarding again rather than like just this like giant tug of war where nobody ever dies um I, i've been having fun from what i played from what i played of it and i definitely would like recommend that people check it out because overwatch still like like you i think we forget like how much of like an og game it was like overwatch was oh, like yeah. the og it hero changed shooter. everything yeah. it changed the like, way we we watched video games and played video games mm -hmm. at the same time like it deserved every game of the year accolade that it got whenever it did and people are like it's just a multiplayer game i'm just like bro dude that game was revolutionary yeah, yeah. and it there's very few games that i can think of maybe i can't even think of any that like when your team actually is like playing together as a team or even not even the whole team but just like a few of you and you like really band together and like like you know push the objective or clutch the game like there's very few games that give like that satisfying level of teamwork specifically teamwork um yeah. and, and that was really cool and I, and I are like i really wanted to like get some get some more friends together to, to play it as a group i i do think i think the problem that i'm noticing at least for myself with hero shooters or not hero shooters like standard shooters per se versus battle royales is like and this applies to overwatch they the the floor to have fun with them compared to a battle royale is like lower i think so like it's easier to have fun with just like a standard like an arena shooter style game or an overwatch um than in a br where you can jump in for like two hours and just have like no fun at all but at the same time like this the ceiling for fun in a battle royale game is higher too like that thrill of like winning the game um you know you you can't really get from most yeah. arena shooters the levels of thrills are like very different types of roller coasters yeah. too because yeah. like if i were to like put overwatch on something i would say overwatch is probably uh like a really 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 big um like long like long uh, a to b roller coaster mm -hmm. um as compared to let's just say something like um a, a battle royale is like a one-time stop and drop so like i don't know if you've seen it but we have this ride at fiesta texas called the scream um and you go all the way to the top and it just drops you straight down mm -hmm. um and like it just keeps going up and down up and down like that like that's how i feel about battle royales because with battle royale like once you kind of get loaded into the game you have like your drop moment and you mm -hmm. just that exhilaration kind of drops there I mean, you can keep going back up and down because of the way that the game plays out and every battle royale is the same is that mm -hmm. you engage you stop engaging you engage you stop engaging as to where something like overwatch is just constantly going depending on like the level of engagement but you have to keep going like the, yeah. the ride yeah. to push the item to the other side of the map is an ongoing ride so yeah. Yeah. I, I really like the perspective that you put into it because it's just like as far as that ceiling goes overwatch is constantly fun and yeah. You know, I, yeah. I mentioned to you during it, too. It's just like, I don't know if it's because I haven't played Overwatch in a while or if it's because the new changes are fun, but I had fun the whole yeah, time. While I was playing definitely. Overwatch, you know? I, and I started to definitely get get myself back into that that moment of like, OK, I, I got to try to try like this hero and I got to try to learn this hero and I want to get better at this and get better at that. Whereas like in VR, you don't really have that that level of uh, intricacy and um. Yeah, I, so overall, I just, I feel like, like, when, whenever I saw somebody say, like, well, this is the same game, and, like, blah, 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 I was like, and this game just isn't for you. Like, just, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, uh, like, I don't know. Like, if you, but, like, so many people, I think, are not giving it a chance because, like, they just, like, they look at it and you're like, well, it looks the same. Well, of course it looks the well, same. Well, I think that's like, fair, though. And I, I, I mentioned it to you, too. This game isn't for new players. This game is for existing Overwatch players more than anybody. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, to try and reach more players, they obviously have a strategy. They're coming out with more versions of more ways to play the game. They've got PVE. They've got the story mode coming up as well. So, you know, well, I think I think they'll naturally, come out, it'll be different. It, as long as they please the existing Overwatch players and get, you know, yeah. the, the numbers back up on Twitch and, and all that, the game will naturally attract more players because they're going to start hearing, oh, well, you know, Overwatch 2 is out. And, you know, it's not out, by the way, guys. It's just a beta. There's more new characters coming. And there's a big misconception about that. The mayor too. just released the game. People are, people are, there's a lot of misconceptions about that, too. Like, people think that this is Overwatch 2. 
Like, there's only one new yeah. hero. And it's like, no, that, that's, that, there's not. Like, they've already said there's more new heroes. Like, this is just yeah. the first stage of beta. I mean, like, overall, the beta is, like, not bad, but I don't really see myself returning to Overwatch 2 um, or Overwatch in general because mm -hmm. of this, like, new, these new changes and updates. They're good. They're yeah. not, there's a couple of things I disliked. I disliked the entire rework to May where she doesn't freeze anybody anymore. She destroyed uh, and... me all weekend, though. I don't know yeah, why she's, May destroyed. She's good though. Yeah, she was good. I liked her, but I still think that like takes away a lot of the things. But I think the biggest thing that, that was just me personally. Like yeah. I didn't like the changes to May as a as a May player. But like the biggest things I didn't like was the roll queue. Like the roll queue took I way too. too long. That, I that agree. was so bad. They need to figure they need out. To, they need to go back to open queue. One hundred percent. That or figure out some other system. I, I don't. I don't know what it is, but I feel like that was definitely. Um, it is a detriment to Overwatch as it stands. I I, I, like I get were... I get what they're doing, but I think it's one of those things where they're they're micromanaging a problem instead of just letting. Sometimes it's better to just set players free and just let it be. Let people have their fun. Let let teams have horrible team comps and get rolled like it's their fault, rather than oh I gotta wait six minutes to play a match. Like that's not fun for anybody. Yeah, and like this is like the this is where the success of like other arena shooters have much better time doing it. Where like Halo, you've got so many different types of variations of the game to play, and you don't have to be just stuck waiting on just one. And like with Overwatch, they always had like rotational stuff, from what I remember. But at the same time, like you didn't want to keep playing those same rotational items. You wanted like way more vary a variety in what you wanted to play. Mm -hmm. So I hope Roll Queue eventually like goes away, and there's an open queue solution. But knowing what, like knowing what you just said with the micromanagement process, they want to ease players into five v five, and also let people realize that they need to be role oriented and what they yeah. want to be able to achieve. This was a this was a private beta still. You know, yeah. we still had to like have access to it, so maybe they didn't get a large amount of people playing the game. I'd imagine like once the game launches with all the new features, all the new bells and whistles, we'll probably see some faster like queuing rates and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm I'm hopeful because I mean the thing that I enjoyed most about it was that it was something else to play because I, I, I to be honest, I'm pretty burnt out. on like a lot of what's out there right now. I, I, yeah. I, I was like, you know, I'm more than happy to dive into overwatch, even if it's just for a couple days and I do want to play it more, but I was like, you know what? It feels pretty good to get back into this game. And there's very yeah. few games that when you like, you know, there was one game we were pushing the payload and it's towards the end of the game. And there's this just huge team fight. And I was playing Myra and I ulted and I killed like three people and kept like everybody on my team alive and we won the game. And I was like, that was like sweet. Like I haven't felt that in like a long time, you know, like mm -hmm. I literally just clutched the game for my team. And um, no, 100%. It, it, was it was so refreshing. It was, it felt good for like your gaming mental health because yeah. like I'm with you. Like I'm just like, dude, what do I want to play? I don't, I, everything is like I've already played it a million times already or I don't want to play it. Like even with Elden Ring, I still haven't beaten Elden Ring. Actually, I'm like, level, I'm like level sixty nine, I think. Nice. I'm sixty. Um, uh, and like yesterday, I completed a boss, and I was like, "All right, cool. Uh, I will jump back into it." Tried playing yesterday, and I was like, "You know what, dude? I just need, I just need to put the game down yeah, for a I little know. bit." Yeah. <laughs> um, and I was like, "What do I want to play?" Played a little bit of Halo Infinite because I was like, hey, "Maybe I want to get this visor for the weekly challenge and just get in the groove of things." And desync was awful. Uh, the challenge that I need to get to the ultimate you play on is Xbox ridiculous. Or PC? I play on my PC. I, I have never had. I've heard a lot about the desync, but I've never had desync issues. I've had, you know, other things. But Jesus Christ, Maz is 120 in, El in Elden Ring. <laughs> he hasn't beaten it yet either. <laughs> You've got probably double the amount of time I have in that game, and like level 69 is a is a pretty tough tough climb. I think that's like at least 10 hours of gameplay right there. I know. Everybody keeps telling me, like, I'm, like, level 60. And, they're, like, I, I kind of, like, messed up my build. And I, and I know a bunch of people kept telling me, like, and I know there's a way to reset it. I know. I know. But people, yeah, kept, tell me, people kept telling me, like, well, just, just start a new game. I'm like, dude, I played this game to level 60. I'm not just starting a new game just to, like, you know, like, no. And they're like, well, it's not even that far. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, that's that time was valuable to me. Like, that's, like, a lot of time. Dude, it's so concerning, like, I never thought about it this way, but like I know we make the jokes to ourselves that like, oh man, I have a such a big back catalog of games to play, and I'll never be able to get to it, which is true. Like games significantly take way more time out of your day than like movies and TV shows do. 
um, which is kind of scary to think about how people waste their days on like shit television. But at the same like time, game. like I'm playing a game, uh, Meet the Kardashians and stuff like that. Um, but like, whenever I'm playing Elden Ring, I'm like, dude, this game's so big. I'm like pretty sure I've barely even scratched the surface with yeah. this game, despite it being a high level. And there's people who are already done with the game, and they're like, like five times. I don't call them mocking me, but they're telling you, they're telling me like why aren't you there already or something like that like why haven't you done this i'm just like how much time do you have on your day to be doing i have a friend who's a huge souls fan i'm not surprised he completed it so quickly but he's already gotten every single achievement on xbox he's gotten uh he's he's gone platinum on the game with Mm -hmm. on playstation 5 he's played two versions of the game and he's like going back in like the dark souls 2 and dark uh, like demon souls and stuff like that i'm like jesus christ bro I'm trying to beat the game already. It's been out since Feb- the end of February is when it came out. Sorry, March, Some, April. It's been out for two months. This has kind of always been a thing with the Souls community too, and it, it is a very hardcore game. Very and community. hardcore. But um, you know, like somebody came into my Twitch stream one day and they were mocking me for using a great sword. They're like, they're like, dude, that's like, that's quit playing the what meta. What did they play? Quit, pl- quit playing the meta. Like you're like, you're cheesing the game and like, blah, blah. And I'm like, I didn't even know there was a meta. Like I'm using this sword because it's modeled after the, after well, the sword that Guts uses in Berserk. Like I didn't know there was a great, like a great sword. Meta. And they're like, if you beat the game with the great sword, you know, like you, that's not really. And I'm like, <laughs> like what is you know this? who's saying that you know who's saying that someone who's been mocked too many times for doing the easy mode of elden ring and that's being a magic user the entirety of the time <laughs> i don't that's know. who that someone was was uh projecting onto you because they've ha- just about had it about being picked on for playing the game on what is literally the easy mode of the game dude magic and elden ring is ridiculous i when i summon people like for a boss which i've also been mocked for that i specifically look and that this was before i even knew like magic that was like really like overpowered or whatever i was just like it just makes the game i was like well if, if there's two of us in melee if there's one guy standing back casting spells at least we have a decent chance to beat him you know like one person who's like away from the group who can just just you know has less of a chance spells, of dying dude. you know because they're not in melee so i summoned somebody for the first time and it was like beating one of these dragons that's underground he was i forgot what it was called it was actually a really cool boss fight um, and he legit threw one spell and it did half damage to him yeah. <laughs> and he couldn't do it again. And I'm like, thank God he didn't do it again. I want to be able to like play this. Um, and I did end up beating it by myself. That person, I ended up dying cause I'm the sword user. Um, and it's just like, dude, magic is so stupid OP in this game. I have a friend who is just like, dude, that looks so cool. I love using magic. And I'm like, beta, yeah. dude, beta man, that's who you are. I love, I love when I go into a, uh, like a boss fight. This has happened several times. Um, where like I'll summon two people and we'll be fighting and like I'll be kind of like running around just trying not to die like I've literally done like almost like no damage and the boss is down to like half health you know I'm like all right mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm I'm gonna go in now like I'm gonna help like we got this and I, inst- and I instantly get one shot like literally I, I go I go running in with my heavy attack and I instantly get it's just like oh and I'm sure the people that I summoned are like wow what an idiot like. <laughs> Oh man, I actually had a really great time the other day with this one boss. I didn't even know there was a boss coming up, but I entered one of the big major cities. It's on the far north side, uh, right next to the Elden Tree. I entered that city, and I was just like, you know what? I hate being in cities in any kind of Souls game, because there's so much shit going on. I yeah. don't want to deal with it. So I was like, you know what? I'll go to the summoning pool, summon them. Um, they ended up dying very quickly, mm-hmm. and I know that they didn't mean to because they were doing some pretty hefty damage. Um, and uh, they were they were uh, they were a mage, but uh, like a, a sword wielding <laughs> user. Too. So they were using but... they they were still like doing melee attacks, but with mage. Which I was like, you know what? I can expect I, I can be okay. Yeah, Lind- Lindell is hard as hell um even with this person but i was like you know what i'm gonna go back and resummon them Battle i resummoned them, resummon them for like the next hour and a half and we just grinded through entirely the entirety of lindell it was so much fun i love that i love Elden. I'm, I'm having a really great time with the Elden ring despite gotta, it bullying the hell out of me i'm kind of liking though having a game that i'm like i want to say casually playing because i don't know if you can casually play Elden ring i'm not like grinding my mind out of it yeah that's what i mean like like because all the other games that I play are like super competitive, you know, like and it's just like and I, and I love them. That's why I play them. But at the same time, it's nice to kind of just like jump into something else and only play it maybe like even like once a week. 
but just make a little bit of progress and it feels pretty mm-hmm. good. And then, yeah. you know, I'll come back in a few days you or whatever. The, you get the challenge, but you get to see the actual progression. Yeah. Like if I wanted to hardcore play this game, I'd be like looking up spec builds and like, you know, like item, I am looking up some item locations, but I'm trying to yeah. be as vanilla as I possibly can yeah. with this game. Me too. And it's just been so rewarding and it's so nice. So yeah. I don't go sitting and down no... like, there's no end game that you have to worry about falling behind like you literally have all the time to finish it like you finish the game and you're just as achieved as anybody who finished it you know a month ago no 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 Uh, elden ring is turning out to be probably one of my favorite games uh this year so far yeah I, i mean if it doesn't win game of the year i'll be pretty surprised yeah i i i had some hopes that like me not even hopes but i had some like idea that starfield would probably be game of the year but i think that the entire industry is 100 percent against microsoft and now they're gonna like pick on bethesda for being a want, buggy game want, company do you, do you want my hot take oh yeah i'm gonna hear it starfield is going to be an epic disaster it probably will yeah it's gonna be I a huge disappointment on the on the on the level of cyberpunk 2077 but Bethesda will be able to turn it around better than CD Projekt Red has turned around Cyberpunk. That's my prediction. I don't know. I think that I, I want to give it a better. I, I think it will be buggy mess. Like it's a Bethesda title. You know what Bethesda title isn't a buggy mess. Um, but at the same time, the reason I, I think it'll be better this time around because it's only solidified to two platforms now. So be, it's not. It's it's no longer on previous gen hardware. It is an exclusive next gen game. That's true. Uh, that's, and, that going for it too. Yeah, that's that's a huge plus for it. So I hope that fixes a lot of things. And you know, they probably had to build somewhere for PlayStation around somewhere. And right. now Microsoft has all those secrets, you know, in the palm of their hands that they can now like facilitate make this game even better. So I think it'll launch pretty well. I actually have high hopes for it. I'm not going to say hope that it flops. I, I'm just that's my that's, I, I'm uh, gonna no, sell gangbusters it, no matter what. I think your I think your hot take is still valid though. I mean like you know, after what they did with Fallout seventy six. Well it, But they did turn out they did most, turn seventy six around and seventy six is a very successful game now. Most of these like large scale games that are coming out, uh especially the last two, three years, they are they are when you think of like all the big open world games that were launching that have such like massive like visions and scale, most of them are having like massive problems of of one way in one way or another, and it's because I think I, th- I think developers feel whether it's a creative burn or they feel the necessity because of the level of content that they feel they have to to implement um, that everything keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger mm-hmm. and bigger, and like eventually that becomes problematic like you don't have the resource i mean elden ring is one of, is probably the most polished open world game that i've ever played like yeah it's still has breath of the wild but, like, I, you know is one of the like, other ones breaking. that you know was known for being very very well done but most of the other i mean even the even the even the um well-received ones like witcher 3 i mean witcher 3 had massive problems like the combat was like not good at all it had like way too many quests and was really i thought like was really dull for a lot of the time i thought Mm -hmm. the main storyline was not satisfying Uh, and my personal opinion on that is that you know cd project red spent so much of their time trying to fill out this massive world that kind of the core of it didn't get the attention that it needed you know and and Mm -hmm. that, that that's my concern is that you know, Starfield will be so big and massive that, you know, will the core systems be up to par? You know, all those things. And it very well may be. It may be a masterpiece. <laughs> I, and I, I hope that it is. You know, what's interesting, too, is that, like, despite Elden Ring being, like, a really good launch, if you look at, like, Bandai Namco, like, I don't think that they're bad. I think they just publish bad games, typically. Because, like, <laughs> anime games... Anime games are like a huge miss, especially for I love anime and I hate anime games. Anime games suck. Not very many great ones, no. Not very many great ones. There's more bad than there is good, Mm -hmm. but they've been on a pretty good track record lately. Like they put out Dragon Ball Z Kakarot, which not a massive commercial success, but they put out a a really good game. Like that was, you know, really good for them to. Now that Jump Force game flopped. 
you know, the jump force game was a little bit of a not not a flop. It's not that that was a bad game. It's just it didn't pick up the audience down. that they yeah. were hoping it would. Yeah. Um. It, but like legit, that game was still pretty cool. Like it launched in a good state. It wasn't broken or busted. It was just it just mm-hmm. wasn't fun. Those like Tekken is the only game that can you know successfully put out a, a competitive game like that Mm -hmm. but like their one piece games that came out um their new one coming out they've got a jojo bizarre adventure game coming out which i'm like stupid excited for um and they've got like these gundam games coming out like they've had a pretty good track record and it's it's good to see that they gave this team uh for from from soft a chance to like actually like put out a game of good quality yeah um so i'm happy for that like good good job bandai for having such needy yeah, they they've been putting out mediocre stuff the past few years, and like Elden Ring was a was a good bet they put into. I think I think that's like too like you know when you work with From Software that like you've got a once in a lifetime opportunity like like you know what I mean like like it's, it's like the opposite example when we were talking about Square. This is something that's gonna mention when I lost my train of thought. Square Enix published that recent game by uh, Platinum Games, Babylon's Fall, I believe it was called. Yep. And it is like literally like probably one of the worst you know, AAA games that will be released this year. Um, like a failure in every regard, visuals, gameplay, gameplay loop. It's supposed to be game as a service. Mm-hmm. And I, I think like like a month after release, maybe not even a month, it had eight, eight. This is a, a cooperative game as a service game. Eight concurrent players on Steam. Um, mm-hmm. and, and you think of how much money how much money Square probably lost on a game like that and you know do you do, who's where does that fall lie did Square make them rush the game out and not give them the budget that they needed uh, you know has Platinum lost a step who who knows um, but yeah crazy it's and yeah kudos to Bandai Namco for, for Elden Ring that's for sure I really wish that uh, what do you call it I would be okay if Square went ahead and partnered with FromSoft to make a FromSoft Final Fantasy oh, uh, man. FromSoft game. That'd be dope <laughs> as hell, dude. I see. I, I I go back and forth on this because, like, I I really feel like From Software because they've done several different style of games, but but they all have that same Souls core. I really feel like they could continue to make this style of game for like virtually ever and still have a lot of success with it because it is so unique. And no matter how many games try to copy it and clone it, how often do you hear Souls like now? Nobody even comes close to nailing it like like they do. Nobody, Nobody comes close to it. But I do see Souls like come up all the time because all the time. You know, that's just the buzzword now. Right. Part of me wants and I know I know everybody a lot of people hate this idea. But um I would really love to see like a, a from software MMO. And I know so many people are going to hate that and cringe, but like it's already got. And that's the thing. Part of me is like, well, it's got a really unique social experience, like the summoning and like all the emotes and, you know, like all that stupid stuff, which is really unique. And I'm like, maybe they should just stick to that because nobody else is really doing that. But at the same time, I feel like it's it's very limiting. And I think that is part of what makes it cool. But at the same time, I, I want them to, like, unleash themselves. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. hey, man, if we had, like, a fully-fledged social soul, like, souls experience, what would that be like? But at the same time, if I were them, like, would I risk that? You know, if I can make a souls game and have it sell the way it does now, would I risk doing an MMO? I, I don't know. I, I don't know. MMOs are so unique because, like, the way that the game is, op- like, optimized is to be as accessible to the server as possible. So... I mean, whenever it comes to precision and timing specifically, like it's more about your skills and your team mm-hmm. composition and not so much as with the boss itself. So mm-hmm. I'd be down for it. But at the same time, it's, it's kind of scary because it's just like I, I think that Souls games require such a unique level of mm-hmm. timing based on the individual output from what the console memory is yeah. you to, yeah. you to comp with. So if they could do that with the server and it, not be like, oh, I used a spell and now it's just targeting it specifically because it has to hit. Yeah. Because that's yeah. the way MMOs are built, then you know, I'd be for it. But yeah. if it's the other way around, I think that would like be mm. I feel like it's as feel I, as great as I feel like it could be, I feel like it's too risky. Because they would spend hundreds of millions of dollars making it and then if it if it didn't hit, you know, like I I don't know. We'll 
time will tell but I, I would definitely part of me wants to see from just keep doing what they're doing because they're obviously still iterating on their formula and they're making it better and better every single time but part mm -hmm. of me also does want to see them branch out a little bit and try something different because they're clearly so talented and um yeah Star I'm, not, Wars. I'm listening i'm listening by the way i'm just trying to like figure out this chick-fil-a <laughs> order that i want right now Maz wants a Star Wars Souls-like, where you start as a lowly scrub to become a powerful Jedi. Dude, Fallen Order was literally trying to be that, but it was that game on on wheels. It was handicapped. That game did not look good to me, and it, it did so well. And it's, it's I, love, I love game. Respawn, but like, it did not look good to me. It was a very random game. It was not expecting them. So we only got 20 minutes left, uh, and I got to ask you a question. Have you watched the sixth episode of Halo yet? Yes, I have. Okay, we got to do this. We got to spend the last. We, we, we got some other topics, but let, we got to go in on Halo here. So can I start, please? Yes. Okay. Here is my reaction through six episodes now. And I've been up and down on this. There's been moments throughout the series where I've been like, okay. And I watched the sixth episode late. I heard people saying that this was the best one so far. And I was like, oh, man, like maybe, you know, like maybe there's maybe I'm, I've been maybe I'm wrong. You know, so I watched the sixth episode and I am literally and this is this is my reaction. And I said this in my stream yesterday. This is not only a bad Halo show. It is the worst television show that I have watched in a long time, period. Like like not just like, OK, they got Halo wrong because they totally did. Master Chief is walking around like a legit unhinged psychopath which is what pablo schreiber usually plays in the, the roles that he plays and he plays them well um so i'm not blaming him but he, he two episodes in a row he's attempted to brutally murder Catherine Halsey, Halsey which is nothing <laughs> yeah and so I, I i brought this up i made well, this was one of my tiktoks that set people off and i it occurred to me today as all these kids were ripping me apart and telling me you need to read the books you need to read the books and I'm like, bro, I read the books before you were born. Like, I was reading the books in, like, 2003, 2004, There's 2005. In the books. No, no, that too. What a horrible, what a horrible way to try and, like, own you. Read yeah. the books. Well, There's nothing well, in the books. What, what hit me today as I was arguing with these kids is that there's an entirely new generation. And it's not really their fault. They don't know what Halo's about because they weren't there for Halo 1, 2, 3, Reach those original books i'm like they i'm like they really don't know like that that's the disconnect here is that they they don't know and they're just they're just playing the newer games or watching this show with the, the idea of well the spartans are cool and they shoot aliens and that that's sweet man like you know like <laughs> that that's the only way i could rationalize the stupidity in my head that there's people watching this show and they're like oh i really like this and I got the, and I don't want to take it away. If you like it, you like it. Good for you. Like, seriously, like, I don't want to be like, oh, you're wrong. You know, if you enjoy it, cool. Like, I'm not going to complain uh, for your about you liking it. But like, I got thinking about the Master Chief plot that we have seen. And it, not, not to mention all the other plots are pretty much pure garbage. But the, the plot that we've seen for Master Chief, they have not established like why he is like, this like legendary hero to the UNSC. They have not shown any of it. They tell you repeatedly that he's like, you know, he's a master chief. He's a master chief. They've not shown anything during this show to establish that. They've not shown anything to show why humanity is really desperate in this war against the covenant. They're like, they're making it such a big deal. We got to find these artifacts, got to find these artifacts. Like, you know, blah, 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 blah. Why? Like, we haven't really seen, like, we've seen the covenant. We've seen us fight. But they have not conveyed that, okay, like humanity is fighting for its survival. They've not conveyed that at all. Yeah, it looks but, like human humanity is just thriving like right some, now. Some skirmishes once in a while with these weird aliens. And then, you know, they've, they've got Master Chief, who, again, they haven't really established as like a hero or as like anything like the character that He's we know. He's not a hero at, at all. all on this they've show. established like, him as a raging, confused, uh, like almost about to kill his allies at all times like with, can't with like the history and the propaganda that they even like put inside of the show too 
like he's done nothing hero like like no. he's done badass things but what like, just like why is chief a hero because right. they said so and why why do the covenant v call him the demon like like okay if he destroyed halo and then they started calling him the demon well that makes a lot of sense right or if they called he's all like, the spartans demons that would make sense but no he's, he's the demon killed yeah for no he's reason effectively killed like maybe 10 elites so far and, and if there was a reason for it like they could have given us that context like oh on this planet master chief single-handedly you know like fought off you know blah blah, blah. they didn't give us anything nothing I, I kind of will give them like a little bit of like attempted credibility here because for a while, like the Covenant skirmishes were legit skirmishes in the books. Like they were very selective on how they like targeted yeah. where they wanted to attack. Yeah. And like Oni was easy, like able to cover that up much easier. I kind of get what they're trying to do with the show. They can't exactly show that for a long period of time because the Covenant, before the Covenant war started, there was a long time of that happening. And it was just mm -hmm. cover up after cover up up until the point where it was just like they straight up just went and attacked reach and it became an actual ma like masterpiece mm -hmm. of like shakespearean oh shitness mm -hmm. so like i kind of get i give them the, the, a little bit of the benefit of that you can't exactly put all of that time together that properly i think yeah. you can but i don't think they wanted to that's it's fine it's their story i, I think they can that. they just didn't they realize to. that they should yeah yeah whatever it's not it's not it's not halo we've already accepted this but like the way that they portray like chief is just such bad storytelling oh and the way God. that they finally showed us halo i don't think anybody who's never played halo is looking at this and going like okay what yeah like <laughs> what was i supposed to see there yeah and like there is a none halo. Of the, and the, these keystones things like it still don't make sense i don't no. understand how it's just supposed to be like this weird fever dream euphoria moment for why? them to touch it so many times that they why? need to be connected to why would the forerunners have designed an artifact that specifically what it's going to going to do is help humans regain lost memories apparently like like what so, what <laughs> so this this is actually an interesting detail gene songs are very prevalent throughout the entire halo universe and the books in the canon gene songs do exist they've existed even before the humanity we know so the well, librarian can do whatever she wants but, dude like but would that, that be was, would that be like that showing be. like like and tell me if i'm wrong what i would see it as like is giving um like shared memory of humanity like something like yes. that like like not yes. like master yes. chief's specific memories like like his specific like oh i'm seeing my childhood like that that doesn't make so, any sense to me no it, it doesn't but like it, it's it's honestly possible. I, I don't think it's ever been like highlighted or detailed in the books or anything like that. But Gene Songs, and, and this is a problem Halo 4 had as well, is that like it, they had a lot of like what the hell moments that you're having right now, mm -hmm. uh, even in Halo 4. Because in Halo 4, there's a moment where there's a Gene Song that's unlocked within Chief where Chief is able to physically connect with the librarian. Yeah, I remember. And also see like, you know, what the librarian wanted to see, which was like not his own memories. Right. Um, it's possible. Like, if we could see that far back, what's to say there's a there's not a gene song that the forerunners implanted into the artifacts that lets them see like their past stuff? Um, and it, it, it actually does technically fall into canon whenever we get into like the semantics of things. But the way that they do the storytelling methods for it just doesn't make a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Um, especially because they haven't told you who the forerunners are. We haven't right. heard of anything specific to the forerunners. Um, and, and what see, that means if they were showing if they were showing if when master chief was touching this artifact he was getting some of those like almost like uh moments of what do they call it exposition like like showing you different parts of the halo universe's past like like those like the like the forerunners or like humanity's old you know like the old version i don't want to call it old version but like the history of humanity if he was seeing some of that stuff I think that could work really well, like because it's setting up these weird, like, well, what was that? What was this ancient human civilization, or, or uh, mm -hmm. you know? But instead, it's it's him remembering things from when he was five or six, and it's like, well, why would the forerunners have wanted to? And I'm just, what they'll probably do is they'll say, well, he, you know, he's one of the blessed ones. That's why he needed to be led to Halo and blah 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 blah. But like, I... so I mean, the way that I could see it, and like I said, it, it does fall into it. They're just bad at telling the story, which I agree, is that the librarian can make, 
and she even says this and admits to it in Halo 4 is that everything that she has done to lead up to this moment was a part of her plan. The librarian had a, like a very mm-hmm. well thought out plan. She had plans and gene songs in place for entire hundreds of thousands of years later. That was that her job, the, yeah. The, her job was to ensure that humanity would get to a place where they could, you know, reclaim the mantle responsibility. Um, and like her plan was to eventually get to a place where Halsey will eventually create the Spartan program. And that's mm-hmm. the story that we're being told that we have been told. Yeah. Um, yeah. so it's possible. So like, it's possible for if the librarian exists in this halo universe, which I'm assuming she will, um, can have the effect to just say, you know, I've expected that this place will eventually happen at this point in time, in the universe. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, that's the, that's the space magic of halo. Like there is there is technically space magic in halo uh you can narrow it down to just like how the species interacts and stuff like that but like the mantle responsibility isn't a physical place or location it is an actual space magic yeah um but it's not some it's not summarized to being space magic which is what makes halo so core corely different and unique Mm -hmm. as compared to like destiny the same people who made this yeah. Bungie yeah. had already planned all this out beforehand, by the way. This isn't something yeah. like 343 is just making shit up as they go. Yeah. Like yeah. Bungie had they this had already like planned, planned yeah. it right out. Yeah, they had a Bible for it. So like 343 is playing by it, and I trust that they're playing by it accordingly. Um, because nobody from Bungie spoken up saying like this isn't what we wanted. They admitted to I'm saying sure like we would have gone a different really. direction. But yeah, right. they would have led to it. They would have done it differently. It's like it was more like a blueprint, not a exact, you know, you need to do X, Y, and Z. It was probably like this is what's yeah. next. Yeah, Marcus Leto admitted to it too. He's like, I he's like, we would have never gone the way three four three did with the forerunners. He's like, we would have kept them a mystery and stuff I like that. I think I heard that, yeah. Yeah. So it's it's possible. It's just it sucks that the way that they're telling everything, the the the, the show is bad. Like it really it generally is. is bad. And not just like, a bad nothing, Halo show, it's a bad show. It's just yeah, it's just a bad show. There's like I, no good continuity to it at I all. I asked I asked this on my stream yesterday. And there's like nobody else who's even watching the show. So there's like one person, I think, who's watching it. So they couldn't really answer it. But I was like, and I just want to say, too, that I think the plot that they're doing with Master Chief and like kind of like the whole uh, realizing the childhood or, or uh, see, seeing the evils of like Hal- Halsey and the UNSC and stuff. This would have totally been like a fine B plot for a different Spartan, not Master Chief. If they did this with any other Spartan, I think it's fine. It, it's it's showing you know kind of like the sacrifices being made and the moral duplicity going on and stuff but i said to uh i asked this question and anybody i've talked to hasn't really given me an answer as far as like what who who is who is the likable character in this show what what characters can you tell me do you like in this show like there's there's Honestly, no real like captain keys is the closest thing that i can find to like a, yeah. a, a likable he's a, character he's, he's a basic character right now there's yes. still nothing really defining Extremely about him basic. yet yeah i would say that the only ones that i like is the rest of silver team honestly i think extremely that side characters it. but yeah yeah, yeah very side fine. characters who've got like way more refined like character to them yeah like you got two spartans who are just like no bullshit know nothing mm-hmm. like i never thought about thinking about why i don't think about what stupid ass question which is um, a dumb plot point but it was a dumb plot question like i get <laughs> it but whatever but like i even like her i even like her uh development too like yeah. it's i think they're they're telling a much more powerful story about what it was like to be indoctrinated versus chief saying you abducted me i i hate, like, we know that I but like everybody it. else doesn't care I hated though. I cringed so bad when the three Spartans were in that room with Miranda Keys, and for no reason they're just blurting out classified UNSC secrets about the Spartan, and they're like laughing about it. They're like, "Oh, oh I remember that time Halsey killed our dog." You know, like it's just like this is not how the Spartans would function whatsoever. Like these are highly classified Especially- details. Not even Spartan Twos, but like Spartan Twos, like in the books, did have this show more emotion uh, as compared to like what we were able to see from like Chief, because Chief is obviously just such the I mean, Chief is supposed to be quite literally Clint Eastwood of Halo. Um, that's that's literally what Marty O'Donnell said. He's like, we wanted something like Clint Eastwood, just a badass man, no, a few words, man, a few words, and like when you look at like the other Spartans that do have character in the books, which there are. Um, they don't express themselves this way, like where they do like talk about like reminiscing, like reminiscing isn't something that they did. Yeah. And this is what it exactly was, was reminiscing. Right. But, you know, to the point of the plot 
of this show. I think that the way that they're bringing up the reminiscing is really nice. I really do like that touch, actually. I think that's probably one of the good things so far about this is that while the Spartan program isn't the that isn't the Spartan program we know about. Yeah. They're still doing a pretty good job at telling it through the lens of other people who have yeah. quite literally less screen time than like most environments showed off in this yeah, game or the true. show. Um one thing that what the heck was I gonna say? I keep losing my train of thought today. I don't know why. I'm something must be wrong with my brain. Um I'm sure it was some some insult about <laughs> the show because I have almost nothing good good to say about it but i mean yeah i, I guess i'll just leave it at that I, I, I got i got my rant out for the week i i i just i'm so disappointed like because i i really went into this show my the, the way i approached this show is okay i know it's not really gonna be halo it's not gonna tell a story that we know and that's fine i just want it to be a good show like that was my basis mm -hmm. so like if people watch this show who know nothing about halo it can act as a good bridge for them to be like, okay, I really like that. I know what all the, all my friends who played the halo games, like, like about it, you know, like, mm -hmm. or, or maybe now, maybe I will go play halo now, you know, like that kind of thing. I was like, that's all I wanted. And yeah, I know. I'm it, just so if it's working. It's working. We got season two right around the corner. Finally tomorrow. I'm actually excited. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. yeah. I'll be playing, that but it was tomorrow. a really bad episode. I think it was probably one of the worst episodes. Yeah, if anything, but the reviews uh, the, were all the best. I don't get it. So the so out of character thing where Sheep is just talking about liquefying Halsey, Halsey with radiation. Yes, yes. and that, had that have been any other character, I would have been yeah. fine. And see, just... that's what I'm talking about. Like if they had another Spartan who was who was going through what Chief is going through. And, and like figuring out all this about the Spartan program and stuff and being upset about it. I think it's a decent side plot. It's not like the protagonist story though. Like if they had Miranda be that person to do that. Sure. I think that would have made too. more sense. Finding out Miranda, all their dirty secrets. Yeah. Miranda, even in the canon was not a big fan of Halsey. She did not like her mother. No. Like if she was the gonna be that person in this show, that would have been fine. It could have been like, anybody. They literally could have used any character to do this. And I'm also ready for the Quan Ha like storyline to just end. I a just don't give a are. damn. It's I, so dumb. I think what might end up I've heard speculation that what might end up happening there is that we'll see Magic all get glassed. And that'll be like the moment where finally the cup where we people realize the covenant are like a big deal. But I, I don't I think Magical will get glass. I think it'll be uh, I think it'll be Reach still. I think it, they'll still make Reach. Glass. It might be. It might be. You know? um, I bet you anything I what's going to happen, dude. Bet you anything. Uh, they're they're going to finally realize that the Keystone is there. So what's going to happen? The Unreach. entire fleet. The entire fleet is going to come to Reach. They're going to glass Reach. And then magically Miranda is going to be like, I have the coordinates for the Halo. We got to escape Reach while they're glassing it. <laughs> And then they're gonna uh, tie it up. I'm after calling it 150 right now. years, we translated saying Healy in the past 30 minutes <laughs> because uh, we never tried before, but now we know all the secrets. And I bet you anything that's what's gonna happen. Not next episode, but probably the episode after. I think the next episode will lead up to the Covenant. Of, I, at the very end of the episode next week, it's gonna be the Covenant. The Boom. final shot Anomaly will no detected. doubt be Master Chief and whoever else is with him at the time, hopping out of slip space seeing halo for externally and that will be the okay yep season two yep oh god all right yeah. well i got a minute until my yep. thing so yeah let's get out of here we'll skip the other stuff this week uh trek to yomi and loot river are two games coming out that you guys should be looking out for i got nothing else to say me either everybody i have places to be in exactly now so thank you so much Peace for out. coming by yeah see you next monday guys Hope you enjoyed the podcast. See ya. All right.